what's up guys i'm here in kiev ukraine and i've tried to shoot this video a few times but it keeps getting too long anyway this video is about why i left the u.s to move to eastern europe so to try to keep this short i'm gonna just break it into what i didn't like about the u.s and what i like about eastern europe and if you want to hear more about any of these specific topics let me know because i think i'm going to start doing more videos about living out here just living remote lifestyle and that kind of thing. If you saw my why I left my 200K job video, I think, sorry if you can hear the opera in the back, I think that having a good lifestyle design is gonna ultimately make you more fulfilled than making more money, even if it's 20K to 200K, all right? So let's get into what I didn't like about the US. This year, it's easier to understand because it kind of seems like the US is falling apart in a few different ways. But keep in mind, I made this decision last year, over a year ago, and at that point in time, people were making fun of me. I'm not gonna lie. They'd say, why, do you, why would you go to Eastern Europe? People at work, when I was leaving work, and when I got to Serbia, which is where I was last year, people said, why would you move to Serbia? They don't get it. And it was hard to say a good, honest answer because in doing that, I kind of seem like a hater, but now I don't really care because I know I'm not going back. Anyway, <laughs> here's the reasons why I left SF. All right, first was the city is, in my opinion, just not a nice place to live. And that's if you live in the city like I did. Okay, here's just a few of the things I saw on a daily basis. So I would see people doing heroin, literally with the needle in their arm, and acting like people on heroin act, kind of like a zombie, okay? Uh, people would ask me money for money pretty much every day. Uh, I would see people shoplifting. The laws there are set up, so if you're stealing under $200 worth of goods, you basically don't get prosecuted, you get a fine. So you just walk in and walk out with the stuff you want. and. I'm not joking, I saw that over 10 times at the Walgreens near my apartment. Walgreens is kind of like a, a grocery store. Uh, and then the craziest thing I saw was at this park near my place. It's called Dolores Park. It's usually a pretty nice park, but one day I actually saw someone get shot. Okay, you heard the gunshots, everyone ran in all directions. And then I actually saw the guy, he was wearing a white shirt, it's about 20 feet away from me and his shirt was all red, right? And then shortly after I saw him, the police who were near me saw him too. They ran up to him, guns pointed, get on the ground. Yeah, so that was pretty, that was pretty crazy to witness. And you'd not think that would be in uh, the US at all, let alone the most expensive city in America. So those are some just, I guess you could call them safety reasons. It's just not really nice being around that stuff, if you know what I mean. Moving on to the economics of the US. There's a few things happening in the US right now that are very, very concerning. Right now, obviously we're printing money due to coronavirus. I didn't know about this last year, but what printing money is gonna do is create a currency bubble where there's so much currency, the value of things gets uh, messed up because a dollar isn't worth a dollar anymore and anyone who knows about economics knows about this. So this is creating kind of a currency bubble but that's not the only bubble in the US, right? There's a student loan bubble. There was a mortgage bubble but there's prone to be another one because of how credit works, okay? So they charge a million dollars for a house just because someone who makes 50k a year could buy it because of credit. That's not a thing in other countries, right? So these are all these are all dangerous things that make the US prone to crashes, okay? And I think, and I could be a doomsday bearish naysayer here, but I think that a larger recession is gonna come that's gonna wipe out a lot of people's savings, especially with the currency printing thing. So that's one thing. On top of that, you get, you get really high taxes, especially in California. And look, I'll just share a little bit of info, okay? 
if you actually live overseas, <clears throat> this is not me giving tax advice at all, but if you live overseas and you do your tax planning correctly, there's actually a way that you can make or pay zero tax, okay? So it's, it's through a program called the Foreign Earned Income Exclusion. If you set up a company abroad and you pay yourself through that company, um, then up to $100,000 a year, you don't have to pay any tax on, provided that you're geographically outside of the US, okay? It sounds weird to talk about tax, right? But when you think about it, if you're paying 30% of your income in tax, then that's basically you making 30% more. So you're turning 60 grand into a 90 pre-tax, right? Uh, so these are just a couple reasons, and I'll give one more. Now, what you can actually do if you're working on the internet is live in a foreign country. You can pay a lower cost of living, but you can still have clients, customers in the US. Nothing's stopping you from doing that. So if you can do that and not pay as much taxes, like why wouldn't you do that? So that feels like a good time to transition to why did I choose Eastern Europe over somewhere like Thailand, Bali, South America, or more common places that expats, digital, nomad, the digital nomads go? There's a couple reasons. The first one I didn't realize until I first visited Eastern Europe, but it turns out that a lot of these countries are actually safer than Western Europe. And it's not just my opinion. Before the State Department website got all messed up, every country had a ranking from green, the safest, to red, the most dangerous. Now, most countries in Western Europe are actually yellow, which is medium safety. And that's interesting because you know what else is yellow? Most of South America, except for Venezuela, right? So the US State Department is actually ranking a lot of these countries as equally dangerous to South America. Interesting. Now, the thing is, Eastern Europe is still green, all right? Meaning it's the safest. And that goes for countries all up and down Eastern Europe. You might not care about safety. You might be young. I didn't care about safety either. But once you have a few incidents, and once you understand probability better, you realize that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, if you spend a lot of time in some of these places, right? So from a long-term perspective, being in the place that's as safe as possible is probably gonna be your best bet. On top of that, you don't really realize it, but a lot of these countries are also very beautiful in terms of the buildings and uh, architecture, the layout of the city, that kind of thing, which Western Europe is famous for. A lot of people think Eastern Europe is just block Soviet apartments, but that's actually not really the case. I mean, I know my, my background here doesn't look great, okay? But let's just talk about downtown Kiev. There is some insanely cool buildings and it's really, really nice, if I'm being completely honest. And that goes doubly so for places like Budapest, uh, Vilnius, Lithuania, uh, Bucharest, Romania, you got a bunch of different options. It goes without saying, the cost of everything is pretty low. Um, but if you're looking to maybe invest here, then based on the labor stuff and just a lot of people's predictions, it only has one way to go, which is up. So now is kind of the time to get in. Uh, moving on. This one's a little bit more subjective, but in the past I lived in Vietnam, right? and connecting with people there is very difficult. The language barrier is worse. And even that aside, the cultural differences are a lot more pronounced than you would expect. When I say cultural differences, I mean, you just have, or rather feel like you have less in common when you talk with someone. You have different values, priorities, your jokes don't land, okay? And that sounds like a small thing, but it's really not when you're trying to make friends. Now you could invest five years into Vietnam, learn the culture and totally integrate, but in some way that is kind of like changing your personality, your priorities, right? So while I would love to do things like learn Russian, learn more about culture here, I don't really want to have to change myself to that degree just to have 
friends, if that makes sense. And Vietnam is just one example, you know, Thailand is probably similar unless you've got someone who's maybe Western educated. Now, do I still like Thailand? Yeah, am I gonna go there for winter? Yeah, I'm not gonna stay here for winter. But uh, in terms of investing most of my time, I feel like this is a better bet. One thing that Southeast Asia does have going for it is it has a lot more digital nomad entrepreneur type people, which is cool. But at the same time, I feel like you get people out here with more interesting stories, at least in my experience. Um, kind of like you'd find more interesting tourists off the beaten path versus somewhere like Paris or Rome. Uh, so you can make some pretty cool friends uh, out here in Eastern Europe. And again, that's subjective. Finally, and I, I just had to include this, I thought about not doing it, but here we go. Picture your type in your head. If you're if you like girls, it's a girl. If you like guys, it's a guy. Just imagine them, okay? Now let me ask you this. What if every person in a whole country was your type? Why would you not go there? I'll just leave you with that. <laughs> anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that video about some of the reasons I left the US for Eastern Europe. Now I do think I'm gonna make more videos like this because not too many people are actually talking about living a remote life, designing a remote lifestyle, and that kind of thing. But I think a lot of people are interested in it. So if you have any questions or video ideas, please leave a comment. And otherwise, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Later.